Hey there, my name is Tolo and in this video I want to show you a general game plan for playing Turtle Mech in TVT against a Bioterran. In this video I will go over the early and the mid game with a focus on the mid game um, because on the early game I will probably do a separate video um, but I still have to get used to uh, my build order. So in the early game, what you want to have is a build order that transitions well into a Marco game without committing too much to bio. So you want, don't want to research Stimpak or Combat Shields and mostly don't want to have more than one barracks. Um, also, you want to be as economical as possible without sacrificing safety. Uh, the two Reaper, one Cyclone build provides this. Um, into a Raven, but um, yeah, as I said, I will have to get used to it more to make a special video on it. But the general idea is uh, you get two Reapers, one Cyclone, and then a Starport and two Tech Labs. And from the factory with tech lab you produce a tank and from the starport with tech lab you produce a, uh, a raven yeah i uh, played a little bit around with the reapers while that i didn't build anything at home it was pretty bad but it didn't do much because uh, my opponent went for a pretty early expansion and so didn't have uh, as much army to uh, yeah to attack me. So what uh, you want to have at the end of the early game is an expansion, uh, two factories, one with a tech lab and one with a reactor, and one starport with a tech lab. From the uh, factory that has a tech lab, you want to produce tanks. From the factory that has a re reactor, you want to produce Hellions. And from the starport, Ravens or Vikings, uh, for whatever you have the uh, gas especially for. Uh, also, you want to have a, a pretty early third base, because if you have enough tanks and Ravens, the opponent can't punish you. And yeah, with the Raven, you can go harass a little bit or uh, save the energy to defend attacks. But I was pretty confident that I could uh, defend an attack because I had uh, two tanks in a good position. And uh, yeah. With the third with the third with the third tank it's uh, pretty safe as you see he can't attack I have three tanks at the main uh, at the main entrance. Um, yeah, and as I said, I want to have a pretty early third. My third is uh, already at half when uh, his third uh, starts. So um, this equals out uh, the advantage the opponent had from the early game that he built an earlier expansion than me. <laughs> so yeah, you generally want to have one tank in your main. By the end of the early game, which is about now, because as I said, I wanted to have an expansion, two factories, a starport, and a third. And the third is almost finished now. Now it is. And that is a good uh, point to put a siege tank in your main, just to defend against drops. The rest of your siege tanks you want to have at your natural to defend incoming attacks, a raven probably to uh, harass a little bit of his workers. Uh, yeah, this raven killed four workers, which is pretty nice. And yeah, until now, you just produce tanks. In this uh, game, I played around with widow mines. You can do that too to just put. A couple of widow mines on the main attack pass, like here or here, 
or maybe even here to see an incoming drop. And with the Hellions you want to be active on the map to see what the opponent does. Um, yeah. When you got the third you want to add a couple of couple more of production facilities. Um, on three bases you want to have uh, four factories and two starports. So I should soon place yeah two additional factories. Um, and also about that time, maybe even a little uh, before you uh, put down uh, before you float over the third, uh, you build an armory. Um, and you also only um, produce mech attack upgrades. Because um, in TVT, when you have mech attack upgrades, your opponent's units will die mostly before they even come to your units. So you don't need a second armory and defense upgrades and rather have two tanks more. Um, yeah, now I can defend my third with a couple of tanks. You want to put... Um, yeah, about half your tanks at your third base, uh, a couple of tanks at your natural, and one or two tanks in your main base. Um, yeah, well, on this map, uh, you could even uh, put the tank from the main uh, at the third, because if he wants to drop in your main, he has to uh, fly over your third base. So yeah, an engineering bay is also uh, pretty important, it even comes a little bit too late in this game because you want to have the engineering bay to build to it. Um, the turrets are for defending against drops because your army is very uh, immobile, uh, most of your army is tanks and those take a very long time to, yeah, to reposition yourself. And your Hellions are probably out on the map, so defending against the drop is uh, it's not really easy. This one was a relatively small drop with two medivacs that uh, even directly went into my siege tanks. Um, but yeah, it's generally a good idea to put, put a turret ring around here and around here uh, just to deny the main drop path. <laughs> and it would also be a good idea to put down sensor towers about here and here. Um, a little uh, the timing for the sensor towers is the best a little bit after your third base is uh, secured. So yeah, the units you want to produce is the uh, only tanks, uh, aliens, vikings and ravens. Mm, yeah, I uh, marked pretty badly in this game. I had uh, 2000 overmans while not producing anything. Um, and yeah, now I uh, put down my turret wing. This is pretty important because, as I said, um, the tanks are really slow and they are the most important point of... Uh, uh, the most important point of your army. And if he just drops like three or four medivacs at around here and in your main, you can't really do anything. And as I, as I see now, he has plenty of space here to drop, so you should probably put some turrets down here as well. So, in general, just everywhere where he could drop, you should put down a couple of turrets. What you can also do is uh, take your Vikings and let them patrol around here or around here to see a drop even earlier. And yeah, as I said, we have the sensor towers. 
uh, really helpful because now I see exactly where his army is and can scan to see exactly what units he has and position accordingly. Here I saw he has a pretty big bio army and, um, and yeah, not much else, a couple of tanks, a couple of medivacs. But I was uh, pretty confident that I could hold this with 5 tanks uh, and my ravens. Um, so yeah, you want to uh, put down your 4th base soon. Mm. Yeah, I think it should come about at 10 or 11 minutes. And as you've seen in this game, I haven't attacked once. I um, went over with my initial units uh, at the be very beginning and did a couple of runbys and uh, Raven harassments, but my main army was always at home. And I think this is the best way to play Mech in TBT because. Um, in the late game, the mech player will always win over the bio player because in late game, mech is insanely cost efficient against bio. So there's no real reason for you to attack at all. Except for when he wastes his whole army into your tanks and has nothing left. And you lost uh, nearly nothing. Then you can attack, but... Uh, that's most of the time not the case. And yeah, Hellion uh, being uh, active on the map with Hellions, that's pretty important to see where his army is and how many bases he has and possibly to kill a couple of workers, that's always good. But uh, yeah, I think uh, we are approaching the late game now, so I'll pause. And in the next video I will talk about the late game for Turtle Mech against Bioterran. Um, yeah, to sum it up, on two bases you want to have two factories and one starport. And on three bases you want to have four factories, two starports and one armory. And against Bioterran you need to have uh, constant tank production because the tanks are your backbone against his uh, bio units and also uh, constant Hellion production as a mineral sink and probably a couple of widow mines that you can uh, put around on the map uh, to see where he comes from and possibly kill a, co kill a couple of units and yeah, you always want to have more vikings than the opponent he didn't build any, so it's pretty easy to have more Vikings than him. And Ravens as a support units are always good. So I think uh, this should be it for the uh, mid game. And uh, I hope you turn in next time. Until then.